to try and get them to tell you more, right? So one of the things that we want to think about is how do we ask those questions, right? We want to be ethical. We want to be interested. So let's say I didn't know Colin, right? Let's say I hadn't eaten delicious food at his house. How could I find out more information about him? What should I do? Brilliant idea, right? If I don't know you, ask a couple of icebreaker questions. How long have you been at Pan Am? Right? What do you like about teaching? Something like that. Okay? Let's say I'm a little too nervous to ask an icebreaker question about who he is. What could I do? Absolutely. Ask him to introduce himself to you. Okay? Let's, let's assume that he's going to be resistant to that. And he doesn't want to tell me about himself. But I still need to know about him. Where do I go? Where do you go to find answers to questions you don't know? Or can't you just Google him? You will find right? nothing. You might not find anything, right? You're probably not going to find anything. You'll find one hint for me from like 10 years ago when I was a student in a writing center. I've Googled myself, just to make sure. But you could go to the UTPA website, right? Especially if it's a faculty member here. Look us up, right? We're supposed to keep these intricate biographies everywhere, right? If it's a friend of a family, ask your family about this person, right? Try and be as interested as you can by figuring out what information is interesting about this person, right? To make sure they're your expert. Be interested. Establish rapport, right? That's that icebreaker we're talking about. Look them in the eye. Don't focus on the questions, right? I was flipping through the questions I was going to ask instead of listening to While I to was him. talking. While you were talking, right? <laughs> like, okay, let me just get to the next question. I've got to feed it to him. Give feedback, right? Talk to them. Think about ways that you could say, could you say more? Right? That's interesting. Tell me about that. Right? Use follow-up prompts. Don't just walk out, say thank you, I appreciate your time, those kinds of things. All the things that your mother always told you to do, be nice. We're going to look at these pretty quickly because I want us to rewrite some of these questions. I like descriptive questions when I do interviews because they give you, they encourage people to tell you stories, right? So I don't really ask kind of a point blank question. I usually say things like describe for me, blah, blah, blah. So, can you describe a typical day in your 1302 course? Right? If I wanted him to focus on a recent day or a series of events, I might get him to say, let's say he came into my office and things went really badly for him that week and he was really depressed. And I'll say, well, tell me what happened during your 1302 class from beginning to end. Where did the bus fall apart, right? Where did it go off the rails? Let's see if we can figure that out. So, Get them to think about patterns. Get them to think about events. Get them to perform a task, right? So if you're asking about the history of tamales in your family, imagine getting your mom or your grandma to write a recipe card, or at least to give you instructions. How am I going to do this? And as she's writing the instructions, you're asking her questions. Well, what do you mean when you say, when the moss is ready? Anybody in here know what that looks like? Is it about look or is it about feel? Taste, right? It's all of those things, right? So it's not something that I could just get a description of, but I need her to tell me more about it, right? I've never thought about that. I've, as many times as we've been interviewed in the last mm -hmm. however many years we've been here, no one has ever asked to come see me teach before the interview. Really? No. I mean, you know I can imagine, I mean, I do tons of interviews about teaching and all kinds of stuff for this type of class, but no one's ever asked to come see me teach before they came. It would be a totally different experience mm -hmm. for somebody, wouldn't it? Yeah. That's good. Get them to tell you about their experiences, right? These are my favorite words. Tell me and describe. Tell me the story of. Describe for me. Asking somebody whether or not they like to go on blind dates is very different than asking them to describe the last blind date they went on. <laughs> right? Yeah. Asking somebody if they, like, what it takes for them to get ready to go on an interview is very different than getting them to describe for you what they do to prepare for an interview, right? How do you make tamales compared to what do you have to do to get ready to make the tamales, right? Because assembling them is after the fact. All the 
work comes in the preparation. The mise en place is what the French call it, right? Everything in its place. You can't do anything until it's all put together, right? So let's think about this reading strategies question. What reading strategies do you use? How can we rewrite that question? Whose question was it? Can I pick on you? In purple? Do you want to, nobody wants to own it? It's a good question. Okay, it'll be mine. <laughs> I'll steal it. I have no shame. How can I make it better? What do you think? What can I do? Instead of saying, what reading strategies do you use? What can I say? that are involved for someone, to, this is a connected but slightly different question. What are the things that are involved in a reading strategy? Yeah. It's an obvious thing, but what are the things that are involved? Just yell them out. It's not a trick question. If someone has a reading strategy, what three things have, well is it three things? Or, yeah, three things. What three things are involved in somebody reading? God, it really isn't a trick question. Huh? Rereading what? Okay, that's a strategy. In order to have a reading strategy, there are three parts of any reading strategy. There's a reading strategy, like rereading it, and then there's the person who's... No, this is a really simple question. Yeah. There's a reader, there's a thing they read, and there's a reading strategy. So there's three parts that are already involved in that question. Yeah. How could you ask, do an icebreaker or something to get me to even think about reading to start with before you ask, what was the really good revision? It was... What is your favorite reading strategy? So before you ask me what my favorite reading strategy is, is there anything you could ask me about readers, texts, or strategies that would break the ice? Ask them about books they've read. And then there was another. Was that what? Yeah. What's your What's the last book you read? Or what's the trip we always do? Like, what's the last movie? Yeah. What's the last movie you saw? Yeah. You could ask me. And then, tell me about your favorite reading strategy. What would you say? I would you maybe default to the same one for my students or for me? I think if someone asked me what was the last book I read, <coughs> I think I would ramble around and try to feel like I don't, I don't remember the last book. I'm reading like seven books at the same time right now, so I don't remember the last book I finished. Oh, I do. CJ Box. Oh, Franny K. Stein, something Duncan just read for. Uh, first grade. Oh. I've actually read the entire book. So there's a Franny K. Stein book about lunch and a monster or something. Okay. That's the last whole book. <laughs> so one of the things I want you to note, just notice that just happened is we got off topic, right? We're talking about trying to remember what the last thing I read. Oh, I finally remember it. What should I do next as the interviewer? Repeat the question. Hmm? How did you read it? How did you read it, right? So maybe my question isn't working, so rather than asking him about a reading strategy, can you tell me what you did while you were reading it? Right? I read it out loud, and then he read parts of it to me, but I read the whole thing out loud. So you read the whole thing out loud? Yeah. Okay. So is that a favorite reading strategy that you use? To read things out loud? Do you do that a lot? Mm -hmm. Only with him, I think. But then oh, I also <laughs> have students read stuff out loud in class for the first time this semester. It's something There's something interesting. But I don't read to myself out loud. I why do you? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, no. I'm curious about like why you ask students to read things out loud. Like what happens when you ask them to do that? What's going on? The last time, well, uh, we read to Duncan frequently, right? And so the last few times I've been reading to him, he asks to be read to, and I've been watching him while I'm reading to him to see what he's doing because it's kind of curious. Mm -hmm. And I realized from that that the first time I had my 1302 class read um, a passage from this semester, that I can do things while they're reading. So like instead of me sitting in the front of the class and saying, this is a really important text, and then reading it, like, I don't know, I'm not bashing history professors, but I just walked by a history classroom last week, and somebody was reading from the book. 
I can't do anything when I'm reading as a teacher. But if they're reading, then I can actually play on things that they're doing or something. I don't know. It's just more interesting. Okay. What was different that time? What did I oh, You do sucked me in. You're doing questions again. Now I thought I was just talking. What did I do differently <laughs> that time? I prepared him for the question. I actually listened to what he was saying and then modified my questions to what he told me, right? It's a really tricky thing to get good at, but just like when you're on a date and the key is to listen, I'm telling you, interviewing is like dating, right? If you actually listen to them and hear what they're saying and you give it back to them, if you don't know how to do this, rent the movie Hitch. It's Some of you are not... laughing because you've never been on a date like that. You're like, yes. oh, what am I missing this whole time? I thought it was about body shots. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> you have to learn the patents of Mariah face, though, because she makes this face that is the Mariah I'm interested face, where she goes, hmm, and they make, oh, I can talk more, which is totally manipulative on your part, but it works. It I, works. Yeah. I get my students to do it. <laughs> What Rent Hitch, right? That's his whole principle. It's not Will Smith's greatest movie, but that's what he gets right, and that's what's true about interviewing. Listen to them. Talk to them, right? Don't become so obsessed with your questions that you're not paying attention to what they're telling you, because sometimes it's on those tangents where you try to, you have to get them kind of back on track. That's where the interesting stuff will come from. Which means getting their approval and somehow recording the interview is incredibly important. Because your chances of getting a follow-up interview for anyone that you want to talk to at this university are probably zero. Even if it's somebody like me who really wants to take time to talk to you, you may not be able to find them. So if there's, you have to ask them if you can record it somehow. And you have to record it because you can't take notes on what I'm saying and engage me with what I'm saying. You're going to miss all the cues, all the moments where you could bring up a follow-up question or say, stop right there. What, did you just say your favorite book is a first grade book? Like, you have to be able to do those things. You're gonna miss out on the good stuff. Yeah. The silent pro, sometimes being quiet is the best thing to do. You'll pay attention this week when you go to class. If you have a professor who asks the question and then waits, and then just answers the question herself or himself, the silent pro makes them uncomfortable. Right? They don't want to wait for the answer. Your job is to outweigh the participant, right? Don't let don't let it go so long that you're both like uncomfortable physically, like sweaty. But sometimes they'll say, Oh, right? And they'll kind of trigger their own motor mouth to run. That's what I call it. The echo pro, repeat back something to them. You heard me do that once. Oh well that's interesting. You said blah blah blah. Then ask your follow-up. And the uh-huh. People will keep talking to you just saying, uh-huh. <laughs> and they'll keep coming at you, right? So we want to end. Shoni didn't get to come today. But he had what he called the hot and not hot tips for doing interviews, and so I stole them. It's hot to be careful of the types of questions you ask. You ask, right? Do you like to read? No. Interview over, right? <laughs> One answer, that's it. Start the interview with small talk. Bring recording equipment. Pay attention to what's being said. Ask those follow-ups. Get sidetracked, as long as it's related to the research, right? Don't get so far off track that you forget what you're there for. Be prepared. Offer them a chance to respond after you've written about it, right? This is a kind of a feminist research technique, but sometimes that's really interesting when you take your research back to them and say, here's what I said you said. Do you agree? might be an alternative to getting that follow-up interview, right? You might get additional information. It's not cool to pester or push the person you're interviewing, right? If he or she doesn't want to talk about an issue, move on, right? Don't force them to talk about it. Stick to your questions rigidly. If an interesting subject comes up, talk about it, right? You should go with prepared interview questions. If you're in my class, you have to go with prepared interview questions, but don't be so Rigid, right? Give yourself a chance to ask questions off script. And you don't have to read them. I mean, you should, I mean, it feels really awkward because I do it with students sometimes. But you should practice this stuff with somebody. Yeah. Because if you're reading off the page, it feels really weird when you're talking to somebody. Yeah. Don't allow your subject to get totally off topic. Don't be late. And don't forget your informed consent, right? Be ethical researchers. 
And now it's officially time to go. <laughs> Bye, guys. Hey, how is that? Totally keeping the questions. Oh, yeah, we're keeping the questions, so thanks.